Guy, he is so fat. Look how little I care. You think I care? Does it look like I care? So here's here's four damage. Here's another one. So this is gonna be two more damage to the soul patch. Uh <laughs> bonus attack time. Okay, so here you're, you're down to zero. Three, this will actually finish it off. And Mime Gargan 4 wins the game. See you later, boys. <laughs> See you later. What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today I'm really excited to show you guys this Mime Garg deck. Uh, we are running this without any gadget scientists or twi or, or trickster. We're really going to be relying uh, for bonus attacks completely on Mustache Monument Frenzied Minions, which when they kill a minion they do a bonus attack, so that does trigger the ability of Mime Garg. Uh, and we're also running Area 22 to give more things Frenzy. Uh, the idea is to control with the early game, I call this the beastly package. Uh, you're running Nibble and Extinction Event for Tricks, then you're also running Mo uh, Cheese Cutter, which is a control card because you play this on one, they have to answer it, and if they don't, you're going to get some really, a lot of very strong tempo cards and take over the game. And then Cyborg, which is a very good answer to almost any play they play on turn two, particularly Triceratops. It also gives you an extra control card later, which could be useful. Um, a 5-5 five, five with Hunt. So, the idea is to control with these early game cards. You also have some very good early game control uh, in Morticia's superpowers, while you don't need quite as many nibbles and extinction events. Uh, you're going to be setting up your teleportation zombie and your area 22 teleportation zombie is going to be teleporting in your minions. Uh, you can even sometimes play Bounty Hunter just dry on turn 4 to control them. It does have Hunt, so this can really, you know, if they're planning on playing a Bananasaurus Rex, obviously it depends on the opponent. Uh, this can really mess them up. It is uh, a control play. Uh, and you're basically waiting to teleport in your Mime Garg either on turns 5, if you have a teleportation zombie already set up on the field, or on turn 6 together with the teleport. Then on turn 7, you have some cool combos. You can play Mustache Monument, which costs 3, and then 4 is going to be the Bounty Hunter. If you play this in a lane with a plant, so the Bounty Hunter is going to do a bonus attack, Mime Garg does a bonus attack, and if it killed that plant, it's not only going to draw a card, it'll do another bonus attack. So that's 4 damage to face, and then, I mean, 10 or 15 damage from the Mime Garg if you count it, the damage that it did to face the turn before. So you're going to be able to really strongly OTK your opponents. Other combos you can do is using your teleport cards to teleport a Mustache Monument, let's say on turn 5, uh, and then you're able to play your Kitchen Sink Zombie right on top of it on turn six, which is gonna do a bunch of bonus attacks. Obviously, if you have a Mime Garg on the field, the Mime Garg is gonna be doing extra bonus attacks too. A very strong card, particularly again, it hits face for six bullseye. Uh, if you have your area 22 set up on the field, all of your cards, you know, you can even just go, you know, teleporting your Mime Garg on five, Mustache Monument and Cyborg on turn six. This will end up doing a five damage bonus attack. And again, if there's a minion there, It'll be doing two bonus attacks, so you're going to get 10 extra damage from your Mime Gargantuar. A lot of really cool one-turn kill combos. First time I think I'm ever really seriously doing a Mime Garg deck without either, again, Trickster or Gadget Scientist. So I'm excited to see if this works. I've had a lot of success in the past with teleporting in Mustache Monument and then playing a frenzied minion like the Bounty Hunter or the, uh, ki the Kitchen Sink Zombie onto it. Particularly Kitchen Sink seems to work really well. With that combo. Um, the cool thing about not running Trickster, we don't have to run as many tricks. People usually see a Morticia and they start mulliganing for their forget-me-nots and their Black Eyed Peas, and obviously that's going to actually be a, a Miss Mulligan in this matchup because those cards are uh, not going to be very effective against this deck. Uh, we are going to get right into some games right now. These teams are probably going to take a long time, so we'll, I think we'll do eight today. I haven't really thought how much to mulligan. I think we're going to more draw into the Mime Guard. I, uh... I probably should have gotten rid of the area, but we got two early game control cards, area 22, and then a setup finisher. So uh, let us start the bets. If you think this deck will win six wins out of eight games, vote yes. We usually do like eight games for a control deck since the games go slower. Five out of eight is going to be a no over here at the live stream, twitch.tv forward slash fry them up. Uh, I think this is worth it. We could win the trade with summoning. Any <laughs> okay. Even if we lose the trade, Nibble corrects it. Uh, this flag zombie, mm, this flag zombie might come in handy here. Let's pass and see what happens. So we'll do the nibble. Kind of liking the flag zombie right now. 
Because, you know, you have combo plays. There's Cyborg. Uh, 1 plus 2 looks pretty good. We'll set up the Area 22 next. That's okay. I'll, I'll the extinction event. I think I like the flag zombie still. One for one. Now what? Baby chick, 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 baby chick. Stop saying the emojis. Shut up. Come on, guys. It's not okay. Then we can go two plus two into into the kitchen sink next turn. So we haven't set up the area twenty two, which seems like a good play, but hasn't really worked with the curve yet. There's that. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Brian, my dog says hi. I don't, your dog don't even know me. He ain't saying nothing, man. Okay, so we go two and three, I guess, here. And Briar Rose, Briar Rose. Damn, that sucks. Um, Extinction Event doesn't even kill this. It kills the Sunflower. Well, damn, that sucks. I I'm not really sure what to do anymore. Briar Rose is very strong against this deck. I, I, I mean. I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing right now. I'm just making the value play. It actually killed her own card, but that's okay. Did someone just subscribe that I missed? Pudus Wizard did. Seven months. So Frimely for three months, and sorry, I turned off the sound, but living in the six for 57 months. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I turned off the sound so I didn't even see it. Thanks for showing me what's going on. Dang, this sucks. I don't know. This Briar Rose is just killing us here. I don't really know what to do, actually. Well, I don't know what to do. I'll do this play. That's so sad. The Briar Rose just got too much value. Did the game sound? Yeah, well, I turned it off because... Hurt. We're still in the game. We're not, you know, we have about equal cards and equal health. They see me rolling. Trolling. Which of these environments should I cover? I'm pretty sure this one's more valuable. It's running a lot of environments. Kind of good we didn't play this too early, else it would have gotten covered. This moves now. So I think teleportation zombie supply. Okay. Teleport in something here. Uh, so this is only going to do five. This is the play, and we're gonna teleport in the kitchen sink next turn. 
pretty good. Unless he has it, you know, he only has two cards, so unless he has a big removal, this kitchen sink's gonna kill something. There's a nibble, which definitely helps. Not a bad top deck, actually. Thank you, Tryhard, for 51 months. Thank you so much, my friend. So we got, like, two bonus attacks here. That's a lot of damage. Honestly, I, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Wow, so do we want to do an extra bonus attack? Or do we want to protect our face? We could actually do both. I think this is fine. We're gonna go nibble. Heals, cool. And we'll get the extra bonus attack in this way. That's a lot of damage. It's seven damage per bonus attack too because of the area. So here's seven. Wait, is this gonna be lethal? He has 29 health, here's seven. How much, this is gonna do so much damage. So here's the first bonus attack, there's seven. Here's another bonus attack, there's seven. And we won! And we just won just like that, boys! He had 29 health. Just deleted. Unfreaking believable. How? Oh, man. Oh, man. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> is that highlight intro or highlight comp? That is highlight comp for sure. Maybe both, man. I think that's just going to be the first game of the stream, is that's what that's going to be. Oh my goodness gracious! That is the way you started off, guys. I didn't even do the math before that turn, but yeah, I mean, it was three hits from, let's do it again, three hits from the Mime Garg was 21. 21 damage, it did, it did one... Three hits is 21, and then this one did eight, which is 29. It was exactly lethal. I didn't even see the kitchen sink do the last bonus attack. It attacks really quickly. Oh, man. Oh, holy crap, though. That was crazy. All right, let's keep it going, guys. <laughs> I'm still just trying to figure out what just happened, man. Is Mime Guard gonna be the star of 2023 now? We need a leap. We need a leap. I'm almost scared to see what other decks this is, this is possible with. It's probably mostly Morticia, who has all the frenzy, you know, the easy frenzy cards with the naturally. But you have, uh, well, Bounty Hunter, you know. Anyway. Damn, that was crazy. I think keeping a teleport so is good. Two nibbles is a lot. This is a very good starting hand. Um, I think I'm just gonna play this. It's better, like, against... Well, what, what is he gonna do even on turn one? Forget me nuts. I wonder if teleporting this... Probably saving teleports is better. Let's... Let's just play Cheese Gunner. If he doesn't have an answer, it's so much value. His superpowers also... I guess 50% of them do kill this. That's okay. Going viral is not really going to work as well, though. You need natural to have a card and then play going viral and also teleport mime, and also the mime lives. That's a lot of ifs. Cards with natural frenzy are, are going to be the, the combo. Combos with too many pieces just don't work. Usually. Except for... Okay, well, we played the hard answer to the most common turn two play, which is Triceratops, and he just plays it anyway. Does he not know how Hunt works? Like, what, what would be the rationale of playing the Triceratops there? I can't imagine the world where 
Uh, it's not saving that for another turn. I don't know, man. Now he's going to play Spike Weed Sector? Is that the justification? It's not much of a justification. Why? Why? <laughs> it's... We made the side where you gotta just take the L and hopefully you'll have a 2 plus a 1 drop next turn or something, man. But that is, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Uh, that wasn't it. Here's this now. There's nothing we can do about it. So, we'll, we'll save the teleport and see this full card. 2 for 1. He could have literally just played Triceratops. And Galactic Hex this turn, and he would have. I think he would have gone away with it. We would have been able to. Well, we would have needed to spend two cards to kill the Triceratops on the ground, if that was the plan. So I think it's just Bounty Hunter. It's pretty good. I, I, you know, I'm not. I don't know what he's gonna pull. What am I worried about on this turn from Beta Caratina exactly? On turn four, man. Three nut combo. Three nut combo would be pretty pretty harsh here. If he has it. But that's that's basically it. Uh, forget me nuts on the ground playing into Acid Rain. You better have another play, bro. You better have a team up. So he got this, but he's just feeding. I mean, it's still... This is a 3-drop trading with a 4-drop plus we draw a card. So we win that trade. I'll, ta I'll take that any day. Uh, the cool thing is he didn't have Shamrocket there. Well, maybe he did. No, you Shamrocket instead of playing the... I, I don't think... She just doesn't have Shamrocket. I think that's what's up. So, there is a play where we just play Mime Guard Dry. This hand is actually not very good. Uh, not a whole lot. We can, we can, we can like, nibble Teleport Cheese Cutter. It's kind of crazy to burn a Teleport like that. We don't really have any bonus attacks for the Mime Guards. And playing a dry 5 drop anyway right now is not good. I think that's what we're going to do. And we'll draw an extra card from the cheese cutter. It's kind of like just a reactive play. Oh, that sucks. He's playing so heavily into acid rain. Oh, that's worth it. We're taking some damage here. It's a little sad. Uh, what's better? Uh, I think this is better, actually. Now what? Five and one, I guess. That's uh... I still don't really know what the guy is running. The mimes aren't very good here. I think it's I think it's this one. It will nibble something. We've done mime gadget scientists before. We can rocket this next turn, so the nibble just hits here. It's five damage to face. Keep that extra health on the on the five five. It's pretty damn good. This will save. Really, no bonus attacks though. We don't. We need a frenzy. Okay, there's a bonus attack. <clears throat> uh, I think I'm gonna develop you. <sighs> We're kind of bricked with these mimes. And we'll go probably area twenty two rocket. Maybe rocket plus bat. There's a there's a sham rocket absorbed, so that's cool. And there's a big chunk of coal. Big chunk of coal. The question is, this area twenty two doesn't really do a whole lot here. I mean, it's still gonna take three turns to break through. This was turn seven, so we'll have eight next turn. I think I'm just playing this. And I'll just play the mime inside. Who knows, maybe we'll top deck something that will curve this hand out. It's something. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just playing dry mime. He already played a sham rocket, so usually has fewer. That is so annoying. Ouch. Seriously, ouch. So this is just permanently permafrost. Permafrost? 
Uh, we have two rockets in the deck. Could uh, definitely use one. Mime Gargs, of course, do not loop with each other. It's a nine non mime stuff. Uh, it's Teleportation Zombie and one we teleport in a Mime Gark. Maybe I'll play this for a card too. Probably should. It's Frieza. Uh, so we kill the Seedling. We could kill the Seedling by doing this. What about Mime Gark here? Then it's frozen, but we can unfreeze it perhaps next turn. Sorry, we don't get seedling because this is frozen, so there's no seedling. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to play this for a card because we really, really need a rocket. Or, or any of our frenzied minions are actually all playable right now. If we top deck a frenzied minion, I, we basically win here. Because this is five to face. He's running this. Kitchen sink for the win. We can like teleport in teleportation zombie here. I don't know. Uh, I guess mime in one. I just feel like if we get any of our frenzied minions, we win. Because it'll be five plus, you know, six. So I think we're going to hold off on the teleportation zombie. Don't want him drawing, so this trade is fine. It's a five for a five. He doesn't get any superpowers. This dies for free now. Five damage to face. Really just need a kitchen sink or a bounty hunter. They basically win on the spot. We're going to burn a teleport and see what we get. Survey says. Survey says. We need a bounty hunter. I, I don't see the extinction event. So I'm just going to hit this. It keeps the teleportation zombie alive. It prevents four damage in this lane. He's down to three health. We're really close here. <laughs> Honestly, we just need anything. In fact, the cheese cutter would work. Oh, there it is. So this... Yeah, that's guaranteed. Well done. Yay. That was just like 11 damage for the finish on three health, no block meter. Yes. Uh, nice to see how when this deck struggles to get its combo pieces, uh, we're still able to really survive. A lot of teleports, a lot of, you know, control. Uh, if they don't have answers to Teleportation Zombie, it's really, I mean, any deck that can't answer Teleportation Zombie is going to have a really hard time winning, because it can always just teleport in things and at least chump lock and still. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Oh, did I have Mustache Monument Mime Garg for 7 damage? I don't remember if that was good, but it won't proc the other ones. Was there an earlier time I could have won there? I don't know. So, Green Shadow. I wonder if the Mustache Monument is too... We're probably never going to play this dry on turn 3, so let's... That's better. This is a... A fine hand. <laughs> a fine hand. I'll go for one of these on turn one. Uh, 
Again, Green Shadow, that's a really good trade, Clickby, because even trade, and he gets two cost three threes in his deck, which is an unfair card. Well done, you. Yeah, two cost one five bullseye, I agree. It's it's kind of BS. I think Cyborg gets the play. Just Black IP trades way too well against Cheese Cutter, and it's it's gonna screw this up. So I'd love to see that trade happen here. And we'll we'll get some momentum coming on later. Two cards is the best answer to Cyborg. But you didn't have a second card. Second one drop. Cyborg really, again, what what two drop trades well against Cyborg? None. It's playing two one drops, because then the Cyborg that costs two trades evenly. And then they still have momentum on the field. I don't know about this cheese cutter, man. Alright, let her rip. Uh, so what does mid mean for decks? Um, <laughs> it's a little confusing. It can be used that it's not a late game deck, it's more of a mid-range deck that it's happening earlier. Their win conditions are more, instead of costing 6, 7, 8, they're more like 4, 5, 6. It's also very commonly used... I'm not even playing this. It's not a good trade. It's also very commonly... He didn't even go after my cheese cutter. He may have a good trade, but he decided not to, not to go for it. Very strange indeed. Uh, we'll do this play, Player on Shrinking Violet. Uh, it's also very commonly used, like mid-range Hunter in Hearthstone was was a, a deck that has both tempo and control options. So it's not tempo, it's it's not heavy tempo, like you have to play cards every turn, it's not heavy control that you're always controlling, it's just late game, it's sort of mid-range between those two. I'd say probably that second explanation is is more the, the, you know, it describes more accurately, let's say, the Hearthstone mid-range decks, but in this game we've definitely... I think mid-range is also a good description of a deck that is sort of control for less expensive cards instead of more expensive cards. He was doing this because he was planning on shrinking Violeting, but I still disagree. So he kills one, we get a free card. This is still an even trade, we can even nibble this next turn. Uh, it's that it wasn't the right. You gotta take the trade and not let me draw the card. It's, it's just insane. Not a good play. So we go four one zero. Freaking believe I'll play around the second drinking violet and not commit this cheese cutter. A blow. I mean, this is the only good option. So it's gonna be. I think so we don't take all this damage. That is not bad here, it just means take 4 damage to face. And then we save the nibble. We also draw an extra card. We have healing, he only has 3 cards. This is a little strange, but I'm gonna do the bat. The nibble's gonna probably be more versatile later, since we're gonna be way ahead at the end of this turn. The damage we're taking just means we have a full block meter now, we have healing anyway. So, for all those tiny reasons combined, didn't consider what would happen if he rolled a 3 and blocked, though. Free superpower would... He's doing it on the wrong one, though. Why not prevent me from drawing cards? He's not respecting card advantage. That's been the story the entire game. He didn't respect me drawing a card here, and also his Sportic is living, which... You know, I guess this is a 3-3. Three, three. Still, man. I don't like it. So... four one one maybe? Honestly, this trade can happen. I'm just gonna play She's Better. We'll play a single nibble to correct a trade. We'll probably double nibble this turn of success, I think. Uh, it'll be single in four. Still three plus one. So he bounces one of my four drops, who cares? Uh, I guess this is the play now. Looks like double nibble would have been good. We'll use the second one next turn, though. It doesn't really make a difference what turn I use this. We're playing very efficiently. We're getting another card. Conga, so that's damage now. We'll take those. 
Just playing the value game. So, one, five, one looks pretty good. We can also go one. Four. I think we'll just take the stats. Probably better put a five, five, and a four, four on the field. So, we got Kanga plus Nibble. He's playing Beans now. Very late. He'll bounce the five, five. Uh, if we get, well, we got bats already, so that's not an option. I think procking the block is good here. We have a lot of damage coming up. We have a couple mustaches in this deck. Cheese cutter and uh, mustache monument, actually, and kitchen sink. So, Kanga. Huh. Call Kanga this one. And then nibble this one, just to prevent all this damage coming in. It not only heals, but makes us only do four turns. So now instead of on a three turn clock, we are essentially on a five turn clock. Proc the block. Might get super, but it's not a really big deal in lane three. That's ultimate. Held it. So it's either in big end, which he definitely should have used, but knowing this guy. I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's his ultimate ability and he's saving it for five damage to face because he knows he's in a situation where uh he absolutely must uh try to aggro us and yeah uh, too little too late we didn't actually have lethal with the mustache monument he would have been down to one with again it was just card advantage and a complete lack of respect to respect the cheese cutter Kanga underrated card i agree man the more i run Kanga, the more i think it's just like Kanga has all these weird interactions when it comes to, like, the meta of this game. Kanga's a crazy card, so you're always running Con Man on turn one, which always really leaves a plant, like a 2-2 plant, having one health. So Kanga now keeps your Con Man, your 1-1 Con Man alive and puts another 2-2. And, you know, people think it's... Dude, people don't play around Kanga enough, and I don't know, man. Two Mime Gargs, definitely too much. Try to get some early game. Not gonna keep the mustache. Mustache. Mustache sink would have been lethal, but we need nine for that. Very expensive. Kitchen sink. That was only turn eight. I didn't consider running something like um Cryo Brain in this deck. I think having more control in the early game is better than Letting the opponent basically take over. What are you going to do on four? You'll play turn three Bounty Hunter. It's not bad, <laughs> actually. Bounty Hunter on turn three is busted. Maybe I should run Cryo Brain instead of Extinction Event. I don't know, man. It feels safer having more control. Extinction Event can really correct trades majorly in the late game. That does not count. That was a disconnect, and he did not draw a card. He didn't play a card, I mean. What do you think the plant meta is? It's, it's Guardian. <laughs> Let's be real. I, I haven't gone and like counted the games like on stream what percentage and stuff, but I think the the, the meta meta is like Guardian with Triceratops and Forget Me Nuts and then and Galacta and then on the other side it's Pirates. Fry, quit assuming your opponents are smart. I think the rule of thumb is play around the smartest play, because if your opponent's dumb, you're probably going to win anyway. Don't be greedy and try to exploit the fact that they're dumb by making a play that's bad if they're smart. That makes sense. I can actually get rid of you. The little morally game control. Ugh, this hand did not turn out that well. Let's hope Edward over here doesn't have too much early game. Wow, nibble or acid rain? I feel like him playing us on the ground is trying to draw out Acid Rain. I'm gonna say I go with my gut. I know this heals for two. There's no amphibious minions for the Captain Combustible, so that's part of the consideration why. The only place Nibble works that Acid Rain does not is on heights. I think that's correct. We can actually protect this from anything that's not Black Eyed Pea on the ground, so that is very cool. I'm, uh, right now, if I don't get anything, I'm going to set up a dry mustache monument and hope we get value later. He's <laughs> like, nope, heights.
Do you think Plank Walker is too overpowered? Nope. Honestly, like, high, high level, like, I, I ended up taking out Plank Walker out of the tournament decks, like, for Plank Control, like, my version of that. And I just ran going viral. I felt like that was just better. Plank Walker is a very big commitment, because it costs 8, and if they have a little 3 cost removal card, anything, they have a Cobb Cannon, uh, the Plank Walker sucks against Shamrocket and Cobb Cannon. It's really, it's the problem with all expensive cards. Now, it does make two other things, which again, if you're reliably getting Bounty Hunters and Gondolas and Warlords, those other two cards are great, but if you're getting Swabbies and Swashbucklers, it's just not enough to justify it. It's not a... Super consistent card, I guess I'll put it that way. I I'm burning a teleport here, anyway. So, might as well teleport my Sesh Monument. We need a leap! We need like a leap! Bookiest. Oh no. It's that time of the month. I'm turning time it off, Bookiest. Time for a new combo idea I want you to try. How about just drawing Cleek Peas? Everything from Flourish to Bamboozle. Try and draw as many as you can. We've done that. How high can your peas go? And, because I know you missed this, fry fry- Yes, it stopped! So happy! <laughs> Teleportations on being bad. I wonder if, um, superpowers... I wonder how good that is. I'm gonna go teleportation zombie and not ping his block meter a thousand times before I mime guard. How about that? So we can actually teleport mime on five, which is so cool. We can also get two shots from Cheese Cutter if we want some card advantage. Oh, it's worth it. Is there a... Damn. Ugh. Actually, <laughs> Mime Garg. Mime Garg with the value? Mime Garg with the value. Yep, thanks you, thank you. So he does a bonus attack for three and I do a bonus attack for five. That's definitely worth it. I have to not die to this, but we should be okay. <laughs> Go, Mime Garg! <laughs> Thank you for bonus attacks. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, oh, it's going down. Uh, if I roll double ones, this wins. I think I'm gonna cheese cutter and pass. I just want to put something on this. He could have two berry blasts to kill the one five. It's very unlikely. It's really hard for him to deal with this. There's some cards. This also like blocks that first shot, which is really good. He's not gonna like hit me, you know. If he plant foods here, I just teleport another card. Easy wins. <laughs> what is he? He's he taking. Okay, he's taking the mime. He had to make it switch lanes. So that was very important. Uh, I think second Mime Garg is pretty damn good here. <laughs> uh oh. That is the only thing we did not want to see. So now what? Now we have to block. We have to roll a three. That's so. Oh man. It's so obnoxious, bro. <laughs> I feel like I need a third rocket science. We've been really not getting them. I'm probably going to take out an extinction and put in a rocket. Third rocket, man. It's, it's just about rolling a three. There's nothing we can do to really affect the situation here. Except for extra BM. So if we roll the three, we win. Dang. Too bad. Against Captain Combustible. Never save. Well then, I'm gonna put in. It seems like that's two games in a row that we really, really, really wanted another rocket. So third rocket it is. Gotta have answers, man. Remember that? Um, remember that? Well, it's not in a row. Remember that winter melon from a couple of games ago? We've been starving for rockets. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to change the deck list. It's a secret, guys. Really looking for a one. I probably can't keep this much like in. This is probably better. Eh, I should be okay. Sad superpowers, but <laughs> Acid Rain is the worst one. Probably on turn one actually evaporates even worse, but when you have Nibble, I'd probably rather have Evaporate right now. This is interesting. If he has a Spike Weed Sector, 
I anyway cover it next turn. <laughs> there is like Rumble though. I'll, I'll play around Rumble and Spike Wing. It's possible to even set up Spike Weed here, and usually it doesn't matter. Usually it's just <laughs> he either has a good trade or he doesn't. But that's a win, you know. He we both spent two drops there, and we get a five drop bonus. So thus is a win. I think we set up area here. Then what? I don't know. Uh, passing here at, at, it could will play around Captain Cucumber, which is probably the biggest turn three threat individually from Grass Knuckles. This guy, yeah. Dos Otto. Uh, three and one, I like it. Need more one drops. We have seven, and then you have a lot of one drop superpowers growing. So, uh, this goes a long way here. Nibble. Is it acid rain or nibble? Oh, no. Things don't really die from left to right. When we play the superpower, this is unpredictable. Well, it makes sense. So what's better, seven da one extra damage or drawing a card? I'm gonna say drawing a card is always better. Uh, plus, not only is drawing a card better, but it means we can correct a trade with Nibble. You know, if we put something with three attack in one of these lanes, drags us out, we can correct it. We can even just Nibble and make the Juggernaut do less. Interesting. Dang, look at that guy go. Wow. Wow. Sheesh! Alright, so we're gonna nibble in desperation. I'm just trying to prevent some damage here. We're actually really behind. The good news is he only has one card. We just have to not die to an aggro death here. Another nibble. Uh, we could just set up Kitchen Sink. Seems like we die too badly to any big card he has in his hands, though. But I, I just don't know what the other option is. We could just go face. It's only four damage. I'm just going face. That is ten damage to his face here. That's a very unfortunate top deck for you, and we'll grow, yeah. Block the four damage, nope. No evaporate, oh, that's so sad. Mustache Monument would win here. I think playing for teleport is the way. We have teleport and nibble. Can't really do anything about this. And a plant food. But. That's lethal. Good enough. We'll take those! That was a close game! Once again, came down the card advantage, though. Is this card advantage the deck between the cheese cutters, the cyborg, and the bounty hunters? Yeah, you can't evaporate the juggernaut there. Uh, that's why it wasn't available, because we didn't damage the juggernaut. We only nibbled it. We reduced its stats. That's not that does not activate evaporate. Yeah. 
What has better removal, Kabloom or Solar? I'm going to say in general, uh, well, for early game, it's Kabloom, and for late game, for Solar. Overall, I'm going to go with Solar. Solar ha it has pr okay options early, uh, with um, Colonel Pulse is actually a pretty decent card. But, you know, when you start talking about Cobb Cannon, there's no better removal than Cobb Cannon. You have Hammer. A lot more versatile. Versatile. That's a good starting hand. Nibble, not very good against Solar Flare. Not a whole lot of things. I guess there's Primal Sunflower that dies in the Nibble, but not a whole lot of things he really plays on one. Um, two drop, you know, these both die to Berry Blast sort of equally. This plays around Twin Sunflower, though. I think for that reason I'll stick it. That's probably the biggest threat. If we play the, the Cheese Cutter, Twin Sunflower basically <laughs> wins the game. I mean, it puts us at a huge disadvantage. I don't know about wins the game. Sunflower. Super, damn. Uh, against this exact play with the Sunflower, then the, the Cheese Cutter would have been better. But... So, um... He's going to be ramping. This is not a terrible cheese cutter here. If he elderberries, it opens up the evaporate, which is fine. If he just plays, you know, we can always nibble the sunflower. If he plays something with two attack, two, two health, I don't know what that would be. If he plays in a different lane, I might do that. Okay, well. Okay. Wow, a lot of really weak cards here to take a lot of time to develop. So, nibbling these don't really make a huge consequence. We're also going to be getting superpowers. Pretty sure taking away sun is going to be the way. There's none of the cards that reliably kill the sunflower anyway here, so. And it's just going to be, um, it's just going to be dry bounty. If he plays anything stronger, this will usually counter it. He played his super, so he's always making extra sun. It's so annoying. At least he can't play a six drop. And we teleport this. That's a... He doesn't have an environment, though. So he just sacrifices a 3-drop. For the sake of... Come on, man. Uh, summoning's good. We're gonna teleport in the Bounty Hunter next turn. Play on Heights, why not? Terrible! We got a 1-1. One, one. Absolutely freaking awful card. Hate Ducky. But we, we end up still with a 4-2, four, 4 damage to face, an extra card, and another game coming down to card advantage. What do you even know? Yeah, we'll go for the teleport here. It teleport's useful for the mime and everything, but there's too many things that we could do here. It's going to be teleport, bounty, and we're drawing two more cards this turn. Besides for utterly winning this trade. Very sad we're not... Even trading in lane one, we got a 1-1. One, one. Come on, man. Yeah, so he just got some heavy damage. So we just have to not... We just have to not die. All we have to do... We have nine cards, we'll have three. Honestly, our curve is too high, though. That's a teleport. It's definitely what we want to see. With mustache in hand. Have we even done teleport mime yet? <laughs> I don't think. Uh, there's another... Well... Honestly, I'm going to I'm going to play for rocket science here. I'm never going to teleport mime. I don't think. I think dry and then have the options of either area or rocket is correct. Come on. Hold on. So, evaporate's going to be a hard card to 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 spend at any point in this game, so let's spend it now, save the rocket. Bry, I feel like what we're seeing here is the lack of a new season. You have a lot of people who don't deserve to be Ultimate League but are now playing at it. So it's we're it's a definitely bunch true. Of Ultimate games. League is no longer the accolade it used to be. Uh, we play for teleport. Simple as that. Probably teleport kitchen sink. Uh, teleport kitchen sink wins, actually. It's, it'll be 6 plus 6. Ugh. It's rough. We're always teleporting, even when we rocket, we'll teleport this in. Uh, 
Is there any justification the kitchen sink here? I mean, it's an even trade. This will end up having one health, though. And a rocket is probably going to save our Tuchus later, so... I'm actually going to go for the kitchen sink. A little bit strange. We can always rocket this next turn if we need to. But, uh, I'd rather be without the kitchen sink than be without the rocket. And in the meantime, this is an even trade and four damage bullseye. Because of the overshoot. Here's a very safe teleportation zombie. Love that. Again, Solar Flare. Such a good gravestone card, isn't them Any answers? Let's see, Conjures one somehow. The great Jukini in the house. Look at this guy. Again, no plant foods or anything we have to play around. There's Cornucopia next turn. So we can rock it, we can mime. We can rock it area. I think I like this play. It also makes us way harder to kill, because now this will be at four health. Which is exactly how much health you want against the player. <laughs> no blocks, okay. <sighs> Very blessed. You guys know what's up. Four and five looks good. It's nice to be able to teleport this in plus have a hunt. Just in case he does some crazy removal play. Damn. It's okay. We don't need health, we need card advantage, and we have it, boys. I don't know if we, I get, PZ here is a very fast game, but the, you know, amount of like Astroveras, inconsequential Astroveras we've had today is kind of unprecedented. Oh my god, he, well no, he is, he's playing into the, okay, the, well the Mime Guard kills this for free. It's just feeding us cards, that's a terrible more Spore. There's no situation, there's no place those more Spores go that that's ever going to be a good idea. It's just, it doesn't help at all, it just gives us free cards and oh, come on man. And uh, that'll do it, guys. That'll do it. Mustache plus five damage plus five from the guard with guarantee lethal. Heck yeah. <laughs> People are mad I didn't keep the skunk bunk alive. Yes. So we're five and one. I love this deck, man. Honestly, this is one of my favorite decks we've done this year for sure. It's only uh, almost April. But this is, man, banger. Can I get rid of the late game? Pretty good. I'm gonna, well, not a whole lot of answers to this on one. And if it, if it absorbs a go to fight, it's so much value, man. I was thinking of not playing this and teleporting in on three. If he doesn't have an answer, I mean, it's, it's so much value. And if he has Mog, it's so sad to use it on this. Freeze is very sad, too. There's a one-cost fruitcake. That could... Honestly? That could be it right there. So, Teleportation Zombie plays very heavily into Twin Sunflower. It's a card you gotta play around. I'm gonna save this for later. It'll probably be more useful. Freeze combo. Well done. We'll just free kick this. It keeps the cheese cutter alive, and that's a card we're gonna have to free kick anyway. Uh, you know, the Winter Squash is a strong card against this deck. Ooh, this also feeds him a card. Is Winter Squash a fruit? This still has to be right, but it's very sad. We'll go for Area 22. Teleporting this in is not bad. Extracting a cool bean right now. Yeah, it's cool beans. Not gonna really matter. Let's match it. Another freeze combo. So we could just area. Probably not a whole lot of environments in a freeze deck. Question is, I, I really should be thinking a little bit more about like what are we gonna do about the winter squash? It's a really strong card against the Morticia because it has low attack and high health. 
which is our weakness for sure. Uh, this bat would work here. I don't know, man. Breeze is okay. I'm really happy you didn't have Winter Squash. That would have made a lot of problems for this deck. A lot, a lot. Uh, Teleport Bounty actually wins the trade here next turn, so even if he, like, go to fives this, he'll probably want to go after it, assuming we don't have a Teleport, and we have a really good anti-removal play here. Thank you, Bob B.O. Jr. Welcome to the Frimily. Thanks for your Twitch Prime subs, guys. Another freeze! Ugh! So now what? So this will have eight health. Um, I think this is the play. I like it. I like it a lot. It's gonna be you. No winter squashes. The key here. And then we'll kill this th growing 3-4. And draw a card. We can nibble this next turn. Kill it before it makes another freeze. It'll keep the teleportation zombie alive. We also have teleport mine. But the t having teleportation zombie on the field and then a teleport to bail you out... That's four damage, by the way. Draw a card. Really good super bar. Um, having it to bail, like a teleport to bail you out in case they remove your teleportation zombie, it's it's so useful. Yep. Uh, Brainana is is the, is the thing here. Brainana would suck. Should I play around Brainana? I probably should, right? Having the option, I think this is good enough though. Having the option to, we're not fully. Throwing against Spring Nana if we actually contest the 7 4 here and kill it. Um, interesting. I want to see a nibble nibble. Oh, show. So we got two nibbles. <sighs> Single nibble, take this trade. But then we don't mime guard here. We have to nibble, though. He hasn't really had any removal. Sorry, this is gonna be at four. This is gonna be at four. That was a great play. That now is a great play with the second nibble. You let this grow. We, w we win this trade because we draw a card. This, anyway, is just out of sight. We just don't. We have a third rocket in this deck. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> We've never gotten it when we needed it, but we we win this trail. Oh, there's rocket too. The card It's just been all card advantage. That's the whole story of the stream man. Oh Card advantage the stream Now we got rockets and all kinds of stuff and we still have this teleport bailing us out Which is so cool we can also just win a trade Here man, this goes up to eight nine uh, burning tell you know, rocket, burn, teleport, see what we get. It's also an option. I'd probably rather have the rocket than this big Borg, so I'll probably just... Right now, I'm just teleporting in big Borg in three. Uh, oh, it's so annoying. Okay, well, <laughs> he's all in, by the way, in the snowdrop, and it's getting rocketed here. So, I think we... I think we... Yeah, I know, Brainana's scary, but he hasn't had it. I probably should have thought about that again. The question is, do I burn the teleport here? I think I have to. Bounty's not quite good enough. Yeah, that's a fine rocket. Can't take 11 damage. We're at 20 health. Opponent has two cards and a 2-1 on the board. 2-2. Two, two. Not a big deal. No biggity. Man, I kind of wish I had that teleport fix. <laughs> what was I looking for? Extinction event? Cheese cutter, cyborg. And that's it. 
So we could just go double bounty, but we're... Oh, man. There's a bunch of things that just kill us if we do that. I think we're doing it anyway. Uh, th this setup makes Dragon a little less scary, because it either trades here or it only... It just gets chump blocked here. The, it, things hunt from left to right, so we'll still have a 4-4. Four, four. Not getting splash damaged against Dragon. Yeah, likely you run dra Dragon. I run Dragon on my freeze decks, because you kind of need to, in case you don't win with your snowdrops. Gotta have another option. That's basically the same thing as Dragon. That's harsh, though. That's that's a one trade. And a big threat on the field that's still making our area not so useful. Uh, so 6 and 2 looks good. Opponent has not blocked back. This is this is lethal damage here. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna commit for this. We're we're basically this is ten, and we're obviously have an answer to this four one with three brains here. Uh, if he plays again, Brainana Dragon or a removal card, it'll mess us up. Otherwise, we kind of just win. Okay, we don't quite win. We're still in very decent shape. That's this only does three damage splash, so yeah. When, melon Pult got it from free kick. It's not it, boy. We're still sitting on sixteen. This actually heals him for six, though. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> Come on, man. Bruh. Yeah, these mime gargs are kind of bricking hard. I wonder if like only three mime gargs would would have been better in this deck. There's a nibble. Uh, probably just nibble. We don't want the 4-1 dying for free. There's the goat from the block. Nibble's good here, though. Well, this doesn't even heal, but... I'll keep the 4-1 alive. Again, it's another one trade because of this nibble now. So now the 4-1... Even trades and draws a card. We got nine damage going on his face. Not a whole of lot of block meter to be seen. And yeah, yeah. Opponents basically in a top deck situation, and that will do it, folks. Irony time? Irony? Six and one! The answer is yes! Got that six out of eight. We'll do another game. Just for sport. Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Feels like a little too much mime, doesn't it? Maybe three mime is a three of in this deck. But the mime garg has been fine. Everything's been working well. I mean, look at the score. We lost to BS Captain Combustible. Come on, man. So, really good card against Solar Flare. Let's start looking for some early game. I think I'll keep a rocket. There's enough scary fours and fives like Elderberry and Astricado and Allosaurus that like getting rocketed, so. Uh, love the, I love the bats. Answers Pumpkin and everything, man. Come on, Pumpkin! That's really good card against them. Um, against Solar Flare. It answers everything he plays. And this is unplayable. You cannot do this, guys. You cannot do that against Immortisha, particularly. Brainstorm 2 can just win this trade with backup dancers or summoning. But Immortisha has summoning, which is targeted. It's 100%. And then Bats, and not only is it on 100%. Target, but you know, I also draw a card off of it, and this thing's still on the field, man. That is not the play. That ain't it. Instant card advantage? No, bro, come on. Elmero, you're the grass knuckles? With the kitchen sink? Yeah, GG. GG. So that doesn't count. 
I'll keep it in the video to teach teach you all the lesson. Do not go for Sunflower on turn one against Immortitia. It's the worst thing you can do. Come on, man. I'll keep one of these. It's a fine starting hand. I'll keep all the starting. You see, we have enough late game that we can just, like, draw into it, you know? So, Cheese Cutter on one against Guardian Package. It's useless. Stupid beta character, you know? That's actually two, two decent answers to Cheese Cutter on one. But yeah, we'll just go Cyborg and we'll be... Group to girl. I think the other cool thing about Cheese Cutter on one, Cyborg on two, I just realized this, is that the only real answer to Cyborg on two, there's no single card that trades well with it, right? There's only playing two cards, either a team up plus a card or just two one drops and one of them has two attack. But if you played your Cheese Cutter on one, the chances of having even one more one drop is very unlikely, let alone two. So play Cheese, probably should have played some four player on Shrinking Violet, but that's okay. What is happening here? Why would you play your three in a try? I don't get it. Oh, I don't understand. Well, I'm going to let this happen because this will be useful, more useful against the other three nut. He must be going for a second three nut next turn. Plus, he's not even, he's killing the cyborg instead of killing the cheese cutter. The more useful card. Bro, what are you doing? We have actually turn four Mime Guard now or Big Borg. Take your pick. Should I go for it? I'm gonna not. I'm gonna do this next turn. I still want to play around second three nut. It's the only world where that was even slightly okay. Okay, so he does have it, but we have the answer. <sighs> Bro, get your monkey ass out. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's not it. And we're getting another card now. Come on, King of the Grill. I don't know. Not a very useful card here. I think we will proc the block. Set you up. And we'll go for uh, Nibble or Acid Rain. Okay. I think the Acid Rain is going to get good trades, so. Still didn't kill Cheese Cutter, though. Still refuses to do anything. Let's see if he gets his actual good superpower, the Tractor Beam, instead of Light Speed Ugly or. Beta, Beta Tina. Genetic amplification. Alright, so he's basically dead already. I mean, down to six health. You set up your, your, your star fruit, though, so congrats on that. Very proud of you. Honestly, it's just like. Mime. Cheese. Rain. Now what? Great. Poppin' Poppies. Probably the worst Poppin' Poppies I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at this. That's rain, bro. Five. Proc the block. Not a bad Poppin' Poppies. Kept them alive. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Okay. Another terrible superpower. That doesn't do it doesn't affect the board in any way. I should summon that card, man. Even make it a little weaker, but summon the card. Don't have it draw a superpower that draws a card. Terrible idea. Two and five wins. Two and three. He can have as much removal as he wants, I don't care. This area also makes these mime guards pop off big time. Guys, here's Soul Patch. Look how little I care. Do you think I care? Does it look like I care? So here's here's four damage. Here's another one. So this is gonna be two more damage to the soul patch. Uh <laughs> bonus attack time. Okay, so you're you're down to zero. Three, this will actually finish it off. And Mime Gargan 4 wins the game. See you later, boys. <laughs> See you later. Yes! That's the highlight intro. That's it, we found it. <laughs> game one end was really, but I'll leave people to, they'll see that anyway. All right, guys. Excellent stream. What a stream, though, guys. Mime Garg, without any tricksters or any gadget scientists, just mustache monument, frenzies, and a dream. What a great deck. Such solid, you know, like, really suffocating early game control. This beastly package, man.
These cards, obviously, it depends on the hero. Brain Freeze, you're running a little heavier. And Morticia a little lighter, because you have early game control cards. I mean, this is... It, no one was really able to get past us. Team up seemed to be a problem. We're not getting a rocket. Usually it was both. It was a, a very heavy card and, and with a team up in front of it, and us not getting one of our rockets. That's what either beat us or almost beat us all day. But, I mean... <laughs> it's not if that's what beats the deck. It's, we are in good shape. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was the Mime Hunter deck. Absolutely love it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Certainly did. Peace. This is Fry.